the real me. Honest you do, honest you do, honest you do. This is very personal for me, as you can probably tell. One of the greatest blessings of the work that I do is that I get a chance to meet and have conversations with some really incredible people. More than once I've met a hero of mine. But nothing compared to getting to know Aretha Franklin, Miss Franklin. You know, in a lot of ways, her music, her voice, it's been the soundtrack of my life maybe yours too. For as long as I can remember, I've been listening to, there we are at her birthday party. I've been listening to and loving Aretha in my house, at picnics, cookouts, at parties, in the car, on the plane, wherever I could listen to her. And the people who work on this show have heard me sing her songs more than a few times even in the commercial breaks here in the studio. They have to listen to me. But sitting down across from her just a few years ago, I was just about speechless. What you want? Baby, I got it. It's early. What you need? Oh. You know I got it. I can go to heaven right now. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Her whole life, Aretha Franklin raised her incredible voice in song, but she also raised her voice to fight for justice. Do you think we're, your songs were the anthem to civil rights, to the civil rights movement? So many songs were Well, played. respect was yeah. a, a mantra for the civil rights movement. It was. Do you feel we're moving forward or, or fast enough? Or? I think that we have come a very, very long way. Uh, we've come to the forefront in many fields, of course, entertainment, sports, and so on, but we still have a long way to go. And in a never-before-seen interview for an upcoming CNN original series, Aretha Franklin talked about the early days of the civil rights movement and Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. When uh, Dr. King uh, came, came out, in the early days of Selma and Rosa Parks, um, I told him that I wanted to go out and uh, travel with him and sing for him. Because I'd sung for my dad and I'd like to sing for Dr. King and what he's trying to do here. I appreciated what he was trying to do, bring people together. Um, or certainly uh, get parity in some way and uh, lighten up the discrimination and give people a chance to make a dollar. And so my dad said if that was what I wanted to do, it was okay. Hmm. You can see there, this was um, shot fairly recently. I'm not exactly sure of the date, but she was thin there, um, dealing with what she was dealing with. You're gonna hear much more from that exclusive interview throughout the show tonight, so make sure you stick with us. We've got a lot of people here to celebrate some of her closest friends and colleagues, and I want to bring in one of them now, and that is another legend, Gladys Knight, Miss Gladys Knight. How you doing, Miss Knight? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay, and um, I, I, I want to do this to honor her, and I'm so glad that you are, you're here to do it. because You're called Gladys the Baddest. She's called the Queen of Soul. <laughs> and, and the voice like hers, her talent at that piano, that's why I loved You Send Me so much, because you could hear that piano right off. Her songwriting, Absolutely. what made her the queen of soul to you? Um, it was everything. You, ha you have to understand that she was the breaker. She was the, the, the person that went out front, stepped on out there, and did what she was supposed to do, and set the pace for the rest of us as far as workmanship and all that kind of stuff. And I was 12 when I first <laughs> heard Aretha sing, you know? Yeah. And my mom was a, a part of the gospel family and my aunt and all of that. And she came home raving about this little girl, Reverend Franklin, Franklin's little girl that sang Never Grow Old. She said, baby, you gotta hear this lady sing, you know? And uh, from there on out, I just had an ear for her music. She touches you somewhere. It's mm -hmm. not just lyrics and melodies, you know. It's, it's some life in the songs and the stories that she tells through this music. And that's what I learned how to do. 
yeah. in the beginning. Well, she know, was so. she was the orig original Riri. You called her Riri, right? And I remember that was her nickname. Yes, and, and now yeah. the young folks are like, Riri, what are you, <laughs> you talking about, Rihanna? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm talking about the Riri. Yeah. And you said uh, this morning yeah. in your tweet that um, that she set the standard for every lady in the industry to rise to. You looked up to her. I felt like she really did. You know, um, she had a voice that was God given, and she used it to the the best of her ability and to all kinds of heights. And she, you know what? With Aretha, she didn't really know what she had. She was kind of shy. I know you've met her before. She was kind of laid back and, and quiet, you know, and when we were telling her, hey, Ree, you know, so and so and so and so, she was just very chilled about it, you mm -hmm. know, and that's a good thing. Yeah. She just put it all in the music. She always cool, calm, and collected it. And you know what I used to say, uh, Miss Knight, is that I loved, I loved watching her perform, but um, one of the mm -hmm. best parts of watching her perform live was when she first comes onto the stage and she sits and then she does her sound check and she says, oh, you got to do this level this way, you got to do this, uh, but this microphone isn't right, this is, and then, you know, and then you get it together and, <laughs> and when she starts, you're like, ah, yeah, there we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> she was... She was picky, all right. <laughs> Very picky. You know? you, we all remember Things her. Had to be just so. Yeah, we all remember her saying, "Think you better think, think about what you're trying to do to me." Especially when she's pushing a, a guy around in the Blues Brothers movie. Um, she has these iconic songs <laughs> where she's demanding respect uh, as a woman, as a black woman. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? I don't think she really understood the power of who she was and the music that she was doing. Because Aretha, to me, was kind of shy, so to speak. And uh, I know people probably never have seen that side of her, but I got a chance to see her so much. And every time I got a chance to go see her, I went to see her. I remember she was playing, playing the breakfast show in Atlantic City, and that was 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so, Rita came out, it wasn't 4 a.m., it wasn't 5 a.m., but she finally came out, she said, I'm sleepy. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> we did crazy things like that, you yeah. know? Uh, Always lifting up and supporting each other. We loved it at that. We used to joke we about her, um, because she loved her purse and it was never far and that's where all the money was because she wanted to be paid in cash. That, that purse was never out of her eye line. But you know, we, we have been talking, all right? She loved it. We have been talking about the impact of having these strong black women on the cover of magazines right now about uh, Beyonce, about Rihanna, mm -hmm. Tracy Ellis Ross and so on. But I want, I want everybody mm -hmm. to take a look at this. This is Aretha Franklin on the cover of Time Magazine in 1968. Magazine. Eight. That is a trailblazer, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Definitely a trail, trailblazer. And, and uh, we were just so proud of her because you know what? Something about that spirit and something about that voice. You know, it was very difficult to what they called crossover mm -hmm. in those days. You know, they wanted to keep us right in the R&B section you know, because we were African-American and, and those kind of things. You know, Aretha didn't care. She did her music, but her music had some magic to it because it just went and swept everybody. Mm. I don't care what color you were or where you lived or anything like that. And that's why she became the icon that she became because mm. she broke down those barriers, you know. Mm. And we all marched with Dr. King, you know, and that kind of thing. So we had that in common as well. And when we come together to get something done, it gets something done when we're mm. all on the same page. And that's where we were with our music and with our performances and all of that. We used to mm. sing for his campaigns when he was running for things and, and so forth and so on. And there we were, yeah. standing together. You yeah. know, and I just, I just really respect that. I didn't know it then, but now I'm so grateful that my parents would take me to concerts to see, when I was young, to see people like Aretha Franklin and Michael Jackson and Gladys Absolutely. Knight. I saw you at the Astrodome in the 1970s in Houston, Texas, while we were on vacation at Astro. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yes, Gladys Knight yes. and the Pips. <laughs> Thank you, Miss yep. Knight. Yeah, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Yep. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been it. a wonderful journey.
You it's be been well. My pleasure. And we'll talk next time we talk. Let's hope it's uh, for something that's not sad. But I'm glad we're here to celebrate her life. Thank you. I am too. Thank you for having me and allowing me this opportunity to say, well done, my sister. Safe journey home. Mm. And I know you're going to be in the heavenly choir. And I hope to join you if when I come, if I make it. Oh, you're going to make it. Okay. You're gonna, you'll make it in. But let's hope it won't be for a long, long time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know. Right. Thank you. Love you. you. You as well. So I want to bring in now another of Aretha Franklin's dearest friends, and that is Smokey Robinson. He joins us now on the phone. How you doing, Smokey? Oh, I'm cool, Don. How you doing? I'm doing all right. So you said this morning that Aretha Franklin was your longest friend. You grew up together. So Absolutely. Talk to me about that. Uh, she was my longest friend, man. You know, I've known Aretha since I was eight years old. So, uh, you know, and everybody else from our neighborhood, from our immediate, you know, clique, and our, our immediate friends and all the kids that we grew up with, they're all gone. Mm. You know, and uh, she and I used to talk and say, oh, hey, we're the last two, last two of the Mohicans, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, uh, our father chose to call her, and so she had to go. So here we are. Yeah. I, I want to play something for you. This is uh, Aretha Franklin from a never-before-seen interview from an upcoming CNN original series. Take a look, and then we'll talk about it. Our first neighborhood in Detroit was over on what's called the north end of Detroit. And um, we stayed right on the corner of Oakland, which was around the corner from my oldest and dearest friend, Smokey Robinson. We were sandbox friends. And uh, I used to give them little tips before they became the miracles. That interview was uh, done in September of, of last year of 2017, Smokey. Talk to me about Aretha and the church in Detroit in the early days. When, when did you first hear her sing? Oh, man, I first heard her sing the first day that I met them. Um, <clears throat> her brother, Cecil was one of my aces, you know, we, we were together all the time as kids and, and, as, and as adults. Um, and uh, it was like the Franklin family was one of my other families, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when the first day I met Cecil, uh, a guy lived next door to them named Richard, Richard Ross. And we all played together and so on, so we were kids. And, and like I said, I was eight years old and um, Richard comes around and he's got this new guy with him who was Cecil. And he had, she, they had just moved to Detroit from Buffalo, New York. And so we went around to see their new house, which was next door to Richard's house. And we went in, and we were in there. And see, um, uh, see so, uh, uh, Aretha grew up on a street called Boston Boulevard in Detroit. And there were two streets in the hood, man. I mean, in the hood, okay? <laughs> Boston Boulevard <laughs> and Arden Park. And it was like they were so out of place because these two streets were right in the center of the hood, and they were plush, and they had mansions, and, you know, everything was green and flowers and so on and so forth, right in the middle of the hood. <laughs> so I lived on Belmont. Aretha lived on Boston Boulevard, which was one of these streets I'm telling you about. So anyway, we go to the house, and, um, and we're in there, and it's, it's, like, it's like a mansion. You know, it's like all this stuff is in there. That we, growing up, did not have... Uh, privy to, to seeing because none of us had anything like that, you know. <laughs> but Reverend C.O. Franklin was one of the most popular ministers in the country. Yeah. So <clears throat> they, that's how they lived, but they, they didn't act that way. Right. They were, they, 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 you know, they were just right down front, down people. You know, they didn't act uh, hotsy totsy or any of that like that. So we were all really good friends. So yeah. we go into the house and, and, and we're walking around, and I hear. A piano being played and somebody singing in a little voice from another room. Okay, so I, being curious about music always, all my life, I go to see what's happening. And I open this door, and here's little Aretha Franklin, about five or six years old, however she was, sitting at the piano, playing the piano, <laughs> and singing damn it like she sings now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, it, it, that was my first, uh, my first sight of her in my first introduction to her. I wonder if you ever thought that you would be performing a duet with her because you did uh, on Soul Train back in 1979 singing one of your songs. So let's look at this. Yeah. 
I'm telling you, it's not too late. I did you wrong. Yeah. My heart went out to play. But in the game, I lost you. What a Ah, uh, Smokey. I mean, that, that moment between you and her when she said, you, you should have been a duo, I mean, that's everything. Well, you know, man, Aretha was my baby, you know what I mean? So uh, we were just cool all of our lives. And uh, we, 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 we stayed in contact, and, you know, we, we talked all the time, and uh, up until she was no longer able to do that a few weeks ago, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss her, man. Like I said, Aretha was my... It was my baby, my home girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and um, uh, as far as our, our close friends in our neighborhood and so on, um, we were the last two. <laughs> you got a favorite Aretha song? Pardon me? You have a favorite Aretha song? No, man. All of them, right? My, my, yeah, absolutely, because Aretha could sing anything. I mean, anything from, as you saw on the Grammys at that, yeah. anything from, uh, yeah. excuse me, <laughs> opera, the blues, right. and everything in between, jazz, jazz rock, everything. whatever it was, Aretha could sing the phone book, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so well, there you go. Yeah. It's a good way to leave it. Thank you, sir. I you appreciate so it. I'm so sorry for your loss. Okay. Oh man. Well, you know what? But but I'm celebrating her life, man. Absolutely. She, you know, when we were kids growing up, man, all we used to talk about, all we used to, uh, everybody in the neighborhood, man. We grew up in a neighborhood. Dinah Ross lived four doors down the street from me. We live right around the corner. The Four Tops live two blocks over. The Temptations live right across Woodward Avenue. We grew up in that neighborhood, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where we're all hoping to do this. Yeah. And some of us were, there, there's some people that I can't even name, some groups and people like that who could really, really, really sing, who didn't get that break, who didn't get that chance, you know? So we were all blessed. And we talk about our blessings all the time, how blessed we were to come out of that situation and become uh, what we wanted to be, what we wanted our lives to be. So she had that, and she lived a good life, and I'm going to celebrate that. Well, everyone you mentioned, including you and Aretha Franklin, brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. Thank you, Smokey. Thank you very much, Don. Thank you.